Hello and thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Uh, so in front of me here I have got the um, the result of our buying trip uh, when we went to Lady Hayes uh, Craft and Antique Centre which is in Frodsham. As you can see we've not got a huge amount but um, the pieces that we did find we absolutely love. Um, so I won't go through all of them, just wanted to show you the fact that there were treasures there to be found um, and show uh, some of our favourite pieces to you. Um, so Gareth isn't here but his all time favourite out of everything here, his favourite is this um, paintbrush or it's, I think it's probably more of a paste brush. Um, so it's definitely got some age to it. Um, it was set in rubber according to the, um, the band on it, uh, made in England and it's a 6 inch um, paintbrush or like I say uh, paste brush. He absolutely loves it, he thinks it'll make a great little um, display piece, um, especially I suppose if it's um, displayed next to a piece of artwork or something like that. Um, so yeah, that's his favourite piece here. Um, my favourite piece, um, which the sound will give it away in a moment, um, and the reason it's my favourite piece is because I'm keeping it, um, it's this little black uh, money pot. Um, or storage pot. So I think originally it might have had something else like tobacco or something stored inside. Uh, so I've got my uh, my pennies stored in there. Uh, and it's just got um, artwork on each side of different London buildings. And the front of it uh, says the City of London um, with a coat of arms and some Latin, uh, Latin scripts on the coat of arms. Um, so I think it's made out of like a wood that's been painted and then the lid seems to have been um, a metal a metal lid um, looking at it. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's one of my favourite pieces and that's something that I'll be keeping for myself. Um, you've got to have the perk of a job really, haven't you? Um, a couple of other unusual pieces that we've got then. So we've got this um, cream pot which is circa 1912 to 1918 according to research. Um, so it's got a black transfer which is on the, the cream stoneware jug. Um, anything before 1912 for this company uh, would have been a brown transfer apparently. So that's how we know it's after 1912. Um, why it's up until 1918? In all honesty, I have no idea. Um, that's just what the research say. So I assume maybe they stopped making the pots in 1918. Um, but yeah, I've, uh, I've run out of time really. Uh, so I was happy with the um, that six year period, um, just to get an approximate age really. Um, so we know it's um, over 100 years old. So it's, uh, it's going to be great for dried flowers or again, just a little decorative piece. Um, so out of most of the pieces here, we tend to try and buy things that are multi-purpose that you can use um, either on their own or with something else in them. So obviously this would look great. We've got several um, similar things in our own bedroom. Um, they look great just on their own as they are. You can throw your pennies in there or whatever, um, hide some important keys in there. Alternatively, like I say, dried flowers, um, a small little posy dried flowers out of there would look really, really nice. Uh, so this is a pure fresh cream from uh, Wigtownshire Cream Rico, which is Stranra, and it says the cream contains a small portion of um, preservative to prolong its sweetness, um, and then it's got a um, some artwork of a lady and a milking stool and a milking pot. So there we go. That's one of my uh, favourite pieces out of here as well. Uh, another one is the magnifying glass at the front there, um, which has um, got a decent weight to it. So it's got a brass, we've shown this on the original buying trip, um, I've shown you the uh, through the lens. Don't know if you can see me through the other way. Um, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's brass, got decent weight to it, it's like a very, very... Um, pale aqua glass and it's a bone style handle so I think if I press down on it it seems to be made of some soft wood um, in um, in a, a bone style really um, so yeah again it looks great as a decorative piece but then it's also practical as well 
the other things, we've obviously got um, some nice brass candlestick holders here uh, and another pair of the front there. So candlestick holders um, are always popular for us. Um, it's not even just a winter thing. They sell all year round at the hive. Um, so it's something that we're always trying to buy. Uh, but when we are buying brass candlestick, we always um, like to buy them in person, ideally, because you can look at something and think, oh yeah, that's really nice, I'll have that. Um, and then when it gets into your hands and you pick it up and you realise that it's dead light and you're like, oh, it's just like brass style. Um, so yeah, anything that we buy, we always make sure it's got a decent weight to it as well. Um, what else have we got then? So we've got, um, I think we pointed out the um, hip flask as well uh, when we was buying it. Um, again, it's just something that you can either use day to day or use as decorative. So it comes with the pewter hip cup, um, leather bound, and then the pewter top as well with the cork on it. So all of these pieces over the next day or two, we will be photographing and getting on our website. Um, but they'll go on social media as well probably or in fact no i think we'll leave it to an exclusive youtube content and um, so we'll direct our social media followers um to youtube to have a look at these so if there's anything that you see that you are interested in just let us know and we'll uh, we'll get back to you with prices um we've got a couple of brown um amber jars here so we've got quite a large one and then a smaller one um, and these are Virolax jars. Um, so apparently uh, Viral was a name that was used by um, Bovril, I believe it was. Again, probably the early 1900s. Um, at some point Bovril then was bought over by someone else and then someone else bought it over and it ended up in the hands of Horlicks, I think, in the late 1970s. Uh, it might have even been later than that, so don't quote me on that. Um, but the really unusual thing about these Virolux um, jars are that they are both sealed um, and they're both completely full of the original um, contents and ingredients. So again, a little bit of research, trying to find an age for these um, and I think um, we've kind of settled on approximately 1930s. Um, and the reason for the nine, uh, 1930s is because they used to have stoneware jars as well um, prior to the 1930s. Um, so that's how we've um, come to age these. So again, nearly 100 years old, still got the original ingredients in there. So if the lucky buyer wants to crack it open and try it, um, then according to my nana, she thinks anything that's sealed will still be good to use no matter how old it is. So feel free to try it. Um, however, we don't take any responsibility. Um, just again, a bit of research because um, you either love it or hate it when you talk about other modern day brands. Um, I quite like Marmite and Vegemite. Um, so apparently though, the, the purpose um, for um, the viral originally, uh, it was marketed with three different purposes. Uh, so firstly, it was uh, marketed as a, uh, a health supplement for um, malnourished children. Um, it was also marketed as a, a nerve tonic um, to help people who suffered with depression and anxiety. And finally, as the name says in that one, the Virolax, it was also marketed as a laxative um, for obviously laxative purposes. Um, a few other pieces then, what have we got? We've got these um, brass scales here. Um, so it's a small set, there's no weights with them, but um, if I remember correctly, we've got weights lying around the office somewhere at the hive. Um, however, we think we're gonna keep these for an up and coming project. We'll probably put a price on them. So if they sell, they sell. Um, if they don't, then we've got something in mind for those mm. for some of our um, lip balms, I think. So yeah, I think we're gonna display some products in those because um, we've got a couple of projects up our sleeve for 2021 um, and they will look really, really nice with products on there and in there. Um, 
seconds lost, I think. Uh, we've got a copper and tea um, tea caddy, uh, copper and brass tea caddy. Sorry. Um, so again, decent weight to it. Not too light. It's not too heavy though. Uh, inside is completely copper. Um, on the outside, we've got a copper base, copper lid, and then it's a brass coated um, around the main body. The main body has tea in a diamond um, shape on four sides of the object and the lid has some really nice um, detailing on them so um, it's got uh, a monkey on there it doesn't look like it's got any arms um, or it looks like it might have one arm pointing up possibly to the hear no evil monkey posture um, but yeah, I'm not 100% sure. I couldn't find anything similar um, online when I tried doing some research. But again, I just really like it. If you're into your, um, your different teas and whatever, and you've got open shelving in the kitchen, then this is a really nice object um, just to put your, um, your tea in, I suppose, or your loose tea leaves. And what haven't we discussed? Uh, I think then it's probably this one. So this is quite weighted. Um, it's heavier than even these um, tall candlesticks here, which have got a decent amount of brass in those as well. Um, so this is really heavy. Uh, research um, suggests that the bottom, I'll try and do a close up at the end, um, or put a couple of photos of the products at the end of the photo, uh, at the end of the video for you. Um, so the body appears to be a black tortoise. Um, and the reason we say a black tortoise is because of the, the face on the tortoise. It looks like it's got like a beard um, and it's got a very Chinese um, oriental look to it. Uh, the crane um, is holding a snake in its mouth which is wrapped around at the top and within the coil that is where the candle holder sits. So this uh, candle holder um, we believe is either brass or possibly bronze um, and we think it dates to the early 1900s um, and again research um, has suggested that the black tortoise is uh, one mm. of the four um, animals um, I think it's meant to have a, a, a good or lucky meaning in China and Japan um, so it's meant to represent uh, longevity the crane is meant to represent fortune and the serpent is meant to represent honor and um, so we found a couple of those online and um, only one of which is available to buy um, but it's got quite a, a hefty price tag on it so we need to do a little bit more research into that object first before we put a price online uh, like i say the ones that are on there um, or the one that is on there is 600 pounds um, so we want to make sure that we're not um, underselling or overselling that one. Um, so yeah, that'll probably end up on our mantle piece um, for the time being. Uh, so yeah, these are the pieces that we bought from Lady Hayes Antiques and Craft Centre in Frodsham. Um, keep an eye on our YouTube channel, subscribe and like the video. Uh, and as I mentioned, if there's anything that you see that you are interested in, um, please do drop us a message or visit www.bhinteriors.co.uk